ESPN is proud to present this commercial-free telecast of Sports Figures, supporting education for America's youth. The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Chris McKendry, and welcome to ESPN Sports Figures. I don't know. I did exactly what you said. I leaned at 99 yards. It's like somebody moved the finish line. Hang on. They're not getting away with this. Hey, buddy. There's something fishy about this track. What's the problem? We did our usual thing for the 100 yards, and my runner says that it feels like somebody moved the finish line. That's because it's 100 meters, not yards. Meters? Meters. Okay, this is America, buddy, all right? We don't do things in meters. We do things in feet and yards. This is the United States of feet and yards, okay? Sports figures, put your brain in the game. This is a yard, or three feet, or 36 inches. Those are called English customary units because it was the English, a long time ago, who invented them. But did you know that since 1893, the American yard has been legally defined as .914-403-83 of a meter? Did you know that? No, it's true. That's wild, right? For over a hundred years, the legal system of measurement in this country has been based on the metric system. And we don't even know how to use it. Actually, you do know how to use the metric system. You really do. Like some of the sports we watch in this country are measured in feet and yards and miles, but some of the sports we watch are measured in metrics. Bike races like the Tour de France are measured in kilometers. The track and soccer events are measured in meters. But that doesn't make them any different to watch. But what about for the athlete? Do metrics make it more difficult? Let's ask Marion Jones. She won five medals at the Olympics in Sydney, including a gold in the 100 meter, the 200 meter, and the 4 by 400 meter relay. So she's pretty quick on her metrics. Marion, as an American, you're used to things being in feet and yards and miles, right? Right. But some of the races you run are in meters. Does that make it any different? No, not at all. I mean, you could say the 100 meters was 19.3611 yards, and I still run the same race. But why are some of the events in yards and some in meters? I mean, what's the point? Well, it has to do with whether or not the competition is international. Obviously, Olympic events like the 100 meters are international, and every other country in the world uses the metric system. Every country? Burma, Liberia, and the U.S. are the only countries that aren't on the metric system. Wow, that's nuts. So, in 1976, the Amateur Athletic Federation stopped certifying any records that weren't with metric distances. That way, we're all on the same page. Whoa, that was 25 bujangos! Marissa, what's a bujango? You can call them bujangos or yards. It doesn't matter unless somebody else has to understand what you're talking about. That's why we have standard units of measurement for things, so everybody knows what they're talking about. So why didn't you just say 87 and a half inches? Because I was measuring in bujangos. Right here is where we got the distance that's defined as one inch. In the late 13th century, King Edward II established that the length of three barley corns laid end to end would equal one inch. Like, what's that supposed to mean? In the same century, King Henry I of England defined the yard as the length from the tip of his nose to the end of his outstretched hand. Whatever. Ooh, I'll take a foot long, please. So you can guess where the measurement for foot came from. The problem is, everybody's foot is different. To get everyone on the same page, they had to standardize the measurement. So the English got to work. Turns out that the length of three barleycorns, one inch, was one twelfth of a foot.
and it was three feet from Henry's nose to his fingertip. You want mustard on that? Small feet. <laughs> They're still using this strange old system most of the time in the US. I mean, <laughs> 15 barley corns. <laughs> That's nuts. Hello? Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Je voudrais two liters d'eau. Merci. In the 1790s, the French introduced the système international, the metric system. It was a system rational and scientific where everything was based on units of 10. No more fractions like 16s and 8s. No, no, no. Now everything works in decimals. So everything is much easier to use. Merci. 4,800,532. 4,800,533. Oh, the meter was originally defined as one ten millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. 4,800,534. Hey, do you guys know the metric system? Not, Not really. really. Well, do you know customary units like feet and inches? Sure. sure. OK. JC, why don't you go 10 yards down the track, and Brenna, you go 10 meters down the track. But I don't know metric system. Oh, I'll bet you know it as well as he knows customary units. Go on. Brenna was supposed to go 10 meters, and she went 12 meters. Mm. JC was supposed to go 10 yards, and he went about 11 and a half yards. JC, I thought you said you knew customary units. Yeah, but you need a ruler or a tape measure to figure out an exact distance like that. Right. You both just estimated, and you both were a little off, but not by much. Day to day, that's how we use measurement. We estimate. And when we need to be more exact, we use some instrument to help us measure. Like, most of us couldn't pour out a gallon of gas, so we use a gas pump to help us measure. And we have an idea of the relation of gallons to how far we can drive. The way most of us experience measurement is by feel or relation. We're all pretty used to buying the liter size of water or soda now, right? So when we buy the giant two liter size, we're not counting how many milliliters it is and then converting that into quarts. No, we're just by the two liter size because we know it's a lot of water. OK, here's what I'm talking about. JC, how tall are you? Six feet. OK, that's 182 centimeters or 1.82 meters, about two meters. OK. Now, how high is the bar in meters? Uh, two meters. Bada bing, bada boom. You're using the metric system. So, Lori, your hand is about 14 centimeters. OK. How long is this shoe? About 25 centimeters. How long is this shoe? About 30 centimeters. And how easy is a metric system? It's pretty easy. <laughs> now, if you just create a reference point, you can start using the metric system right away, right this very second. Let's say that my stride is half a meter. Well, I can pretty well estimate where 10 meters down the track is going to be. 17, 18, 19, 20. How'd I do? 10 meters and 60 centimeters. That's 10.6 meters. Not bad, right? Now, the great thing about the metric system is how easy it is to convert between the different units of measurement because it's all based on 10. 10.6 meters, that's 1,060 centimeters. I was only off by 600 millimeters. OK, Marion, let's look at how the metric system works. OK, the metric system is based on the number 10 and uses a series of prefixes. Milli, which means a thousandth of, centi, which means a hundredth of, deci, which means a tenth of, and kilo, which means a thousand, all tens. These prefixes are attached to the basic unit of measurement. For length, there's the meter. For volume, we use liters. For mass, we use grams. There are others, but these are the most common. The prefixes get attached to whatever unit of measure you're using. 
So a milligram is a thousandth of a gram. A centimeter is a hundredth of a meter. A deciliter is a tenth of a liter. And a kilometer is a thousand meters. That's far. Simple, right? You just add the prefix to whatever unit of measurement you're talking about. I just ran one kilometer. That's a thousand meters, or 10,000 decimeters, or 100,000 centimeters, or a million millimeters. Oh, oh boy, that sure felt like more than a million millimeters. Oh. The metric system's pretty simple, right? Yeah, that's why it was invented, to simplify things. OK, so what is your best time at 100 meters? 10.65 seconds. All right, now what if we wanted to figure out your speed in kilometers per hour? Well, I guess we first have to figure out meters per second. OK, so 100 meters divided by 10.65 seconds gives us about 9.4 meters per second. And 9.4 meters per second times 3,600 seconds in an hour. Wait a minute, that's not easy. Well, it's not easy because time isn't metric. OK, well, let's see. It gives us 33,840 meters per hour. Now, that's easy, 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Right, so that's 33.84 kilometers per hour. Oh, hey, hey, Marion, you could also figure out millimeters per second really easy, too, because all you have to do is slide the decimal point, so that gives you 9,400 millimeters per second. Why would you want to know that? I, I don't know, but it's, it's really easy. The only unit of measurement where metrics never really caught on is time. Time measurement is in 60s. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. Metric time has been proposed. 10 metric hours in a day, 100 metric minutes in an hour. Sure would make life easier. Hey, Marion, let's find some reference points for some other metric units. OK, well, degrees Celsius is the metric unit for temperature. OK, so what's a good day for running? Well, let's start with your body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. OK, that would be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. OK, that's hot. That's too hot for running. What's too cold for running? Well, zero degrees Celsius is freezing, and that's a little cold for running. You can also find a comparison for your weight. Marion, how much do you weigh? 150 pounds. And in kilos? Around 68 kilos. She's smart. So go modern. Go metric. It's a hat. It's a hat. The metric system. It's continental. It's really close. Just a few kilometers. Kilometers? Well, that's it. We'd like to thank Marion Jones and our students from Carlsbad High School, JC, Aaron, Brenna, and Lori, for helping us out here today on ESPN Sports Figures Running on Metrics. <sighs>I'm Chris McKendry back in the ESPN studios. We'd like to thank all of today's athletes for donating their time and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on ESPN Sports Figures. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to take and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website, sportsfigures.espn.com. You can also call 860-766-2000. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports figures, put your brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. ESPN is proud to present this commercial-free telecast of sports figures, supporting education for America's youth.